Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB foundation level certifications. We are in chapter four talking about test analysis and design and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 4.2, the black box test techniques. And as a part of today's tutorial, we'll be getting into the next technique, which is called as decision table testing. Now, decision table testing is a unique testing in itself. Of course, uh, there are different types of requirement when we work on any type of product. And one of, among them could be about a condition driven output. Of course, there are requirements where we say like, hey, if you have a car, you are qualified. You don't have a car, you're not qualified. So maybe I can ask you a question very first thing. Uh, while filling up a form or probably registration for an event that do you have or do you own a car? And if you say yes, I'll give you the form further. If you say no, hey, you're not qualified to participate because probably this is a racing event or it's more about the car kind of like, you know, exhibition or maybe some kind of event related to automobiles. So in that context, the output or further processing is dependent on the fulfillment of the conditions and the output, which is action in our case, will be driven by the set of conditions. So now conditions can be in any number. Sometimes it can be just one single condition. It could be two conditions, three conditions, four conditions. And that reminds us about a basic mathematic concept which you probably learned during your school days of truth table concept where we cre create the combination of conditions to get to know what are the possible outcomes and that's how we minimize our test cases. Now that's very simple and easy and should quickly recall you about the basics of maths and help you to easily remember about this technique. But most important thing that the technique works on creation of the table. Okay, you need to generally create the table which is combinations and then derive the you know possible outcomes of those combinations from the set of requirements mm. what you have with you so it certainly depends on the detailed requirements as well and if you don't have the detailed requirements then this technique may not be applicable so let's quickly look at some of the quick characteristics from here and try to understand what this technique is all about so when it comes to decision table testing it captures the system requirement that contains logical conditions the specifications are analyzed and conditions and actions of the system are identified in a tabular form right below what you see. So the input conditions and actions are most often stated in a way that they must be true or false. That means positive or negative or should yes or no or true or false, any of these ways. Now here, the number of combinations will also always be calculated by measuring two raised to the power of n. Okay, two raised to the power of n. Now here n is basically the number of conditions. So taking a quick example in the table below, assume that you have two conditions to be fulfilled. So instead of thinking of n number of combinations or n number of possibilities of each of them, for example, if condition number one is a card, bank card, then you have debit card, credit card. In that credit card, you have so many providers like you have Visa, Master, MX, Diners and whatnot. So instead of thinking of n number of test cases, which is exhaustive, I use decision table and I just put combinations of that along with probably say condition number two is more about your age. So age can be again, any number of ages are possible. So instead of thinking of so many numbers to compile together and come with a number of permutation and combinations, I use decision table where I just create four test cases. If you notice here, I have true, true, where the card and age are true both are true, what should happen. Then we have true and false, where it means card is true, but the age is false. Again, I'm not talking about any scenario right now. I'm just giving an example that how do we create the combinations. So true, 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 false. Then we have false, true, and then we have false, false. So there are just four combinations. All I'll do is sit down with the requirements and pick up the right actions of these combinations and just the four test cases are enough. So will they ask you to create the table in the examination? Answer is no. At this point, at the foundation level, the table will be provided to you. All you will have to do is apply the given context to the table and get to the right answer. A very easy way to solve this, okay? But again, the table can be anything. It can be about any such thing which happens around the world. So you don't have to again get influenced. Sometimes it can be hypothetical too, which do not exist in this world at all. So you will just have to uh, read the data and get to the answer. 
So to get more clarity, let's quickly look at one of the sample questions to understand what does that even mean. So taking an example right here, uh, here if you read, this is a real exam question, so don't over expect anything from uh, the screen. So this is how the examination question will look like. So what is the expected result for each of the following test cases based on the table, of course. So there are two uh, test cases given to you, that is user X and user Y, and they have given you some criteria or combination. And on the right hand side, they have given you the table to understand. So the first and foremost thing would be to read the table and understand it. So right here, if I read the table, I understand this is about a hotel where uh, they are talking about one condition is Citibank card member. So if the person or the guest is holding a Citibank card membership and second, the type of room. So of course they may have a different grade of room. So if they say uh, that they have combined two conditions of core four combination, two raised to N. So two raised to two is four. So we got four combinations here and their combinations are, if you are a Citibank card member holding a silver room, then what should happen? Offer upgrade to gold luxury. Then yes and platinum, what should happen? No and silver, nothing. No and platinum, nothing. So they have given you a scenario that user X, that is guest X is holding Citibank card membership and a silver room. So if I have to just pick up the scenario, put it into the table and I come to rule one, which meets that particularly, right? So it's Citibank card member, yes, holding a silver room, rule one, right? What should happen in rule one? What is the output? The gold luxury upgrade should happen. So I go to the options A, B, C, D and check where A is offer upgrade to gold luxury, right? And that's D which is very straightforward. But however, we just wanna make sure with the second statement also. The second statement reads as user Y, non-Citibank member, which is rule three and rule four, and holding a platinum room, which comes to rule four. And for rule four, it says no and no for both the actions, which means do not offer any upgrade. So that makes it pretty much clear. The right answer here is D, and that's what you have to do in the examination. So table will be given to you. You will be asked about apply these statements, get to the right answer. Or sometimes they can even ask you a question about the characteristics of decision table, that there are four combinations you know when you have two conditions. So they will say, we already got two test cases, we need two more, which are the two more? So you should just quickly check that out of two true, true, false, false, true, and false, false, which two they have already got. And pick up the other two, keep it simple, okay? Let's take quickly another question from here to just get better clarity and be more confident about answering it right. So the next question here is taking another way. It says, given the following decision table, which is of course on the right, which of the following test cases and expected result is valid? That means in the given options, there are some statements which are wrong and there's only one statement which is right. So in this case, even if you read the table or don't read the table, it doesn't make a difference. You have to pick the option and put it in the table and find out which one is right. So let's start picking up the option. The option A says 23 year old, so let's go to the table, 23 comes into rule two, right? Insurance class is A, yes, because it says A or B, and premium is 90, that's true, and the access is 2,500. Makes sense, that's totally correct. As per the table, the rule two fits into that. Let's go to option B, 51 year old, that comes to rule four. Insurance class is C, yes, that's true. Premium is 100, no, 70. That's it. This is what we have to do at this point of time. So 70 and the option is saying 100, which is wrong. So cut it. Let's go to C, 31 year old, that is rule three. Insurance class is B, yes. Premium is 70, yes. Access is 2,500, no, that's 500. So that's where again it goes wrong. So C is also wrong. D, 43 year old, that is rule three again. Premium class is C, yes. Uh, sorry, insurance class is C. Premium is 100, no, that's 70. So that's also wrong. So I think that's the most easiest technique what you would even learn in order to apply. However, when it comes to real time, you create the table yourself. But when it comes to the examination, the table will be provided to you. The information will be there with you. You will just have to apply the technique and get to the right answer. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.